same I did, same I did, same I did, same I did. I came across two really interesting channels a little bit ago, and it was um, these two people addicted to Fantasy Star Online, and it reminded me a lot of the addiction that I went through with that game, among other things. Well, you just can't stop. It's called an addiction for a reason. And they were basically, they even made a video together. And basically, I, I, I came across both of their channels on my own because, you know, I was just looking at Fantasy Star Online every now and then. And, um, you know, I came across both of their channels and I noticed they were oddly positive about Fantasy Star Online as if it's still a relevant thing. And seeing them together, um, one was clearly making non-stop videos about how it's an addiction and basically how, you know, the game is not that good. But, you know, he keeps coming back and it's actually painful to him. But he decided to dedicate himself to making videos about Fantasy Star Online, even though it's a admitted, you know, he, he admits he has a problem. The other guy is just overly positive about Fantasy Star Online. As if nothing is wrong with playing a game that has no player population left. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a glutton for punishment thing, and I actually find it pretty disturbing. I used to talk about this a lot. Obviously, I still do. It's where whatever you're doing when you're growing up, sometimes it never ends, you know. So, you know, it's, it's something to think about, you know, if you're playing video games and stuff growing up, what if it ends up never going away nothing new ever comes out and you just end up in limbo addicted to your childhood video games it's called nostalgia it's called nostalgia and again i you know I, there there's several different people types of people you know the, the ones that know it's an addiction know it's a problem rationally they know they should move on but irrationally, they, they have this mesmerized craving that they want to continue playing. And then you got the people that don't know they have a problem, you know, that are playing a dead game as if nothing is wrong. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not a waste of time if you're having fun, even if it's like the most mindless, brain-dead, stupid shit, waste of time that you can possibly imagine, you know. You know, a lot of things become irrelevant over time. Things change. The world evolves. Th people move on. But some people never do. And they just hold on to it forever and ever and ever. At their own detriment. At their own detriment, you know. Again, dedicating YouTube videos to stuff that's never going to get views. I mean, I struggle with that you know, with the ASMR stuff. But at least ASMR, you know, has some logical potential of getting a lot of views. Playing a dead game that only has a handful of people has, like, no logical potential. Now, again, you could say it's all subjective, you know, how people spend their time and stuff. But, um, you know, like, <clears throat> these days I've been trying to... I, I don't think it's a good idea to fight your addictions... But just to think about it. You know, when I drink an energy drink, I taste the flavor of the energy drink I taste it and think, is it worth it? You know, is it, what are the, you know, qualities about the drink that I don't like? I'm trying to rationalize to get myself to stop buying it. It was the same when I was going to McDonald's and I was buying everything on the menu. I wanted to taste it all. I wanted to think about it. I wanted to get it all out of my systems. It's kind of like when people buy like a, a bunch of packs of cigarettes, hoping that, you know, they'll force themselves to smoke them all and it'll make them want to quit because it'll make them sick. You know, not, not, not always the best thing to do, but like, you know, if you have an addiction, you know, really, you know, kind of doing a high concentration of it, seeing where it goes and is, is the, evaluating, is this worth your time? There was this guy who was making these uh, Wojak um, YouTube videos. Uh, you know, these angsty videos that a lot of teenagers and people in their early 20s think about. The troubles they, they deal with growing up. And he was talking about how 
It took him weeks to make one video with tons of animation. And over a three year period of time, it would make him $1,000. That video would take three years to make him $1,000. And he would do the math about how many Wojak videos he had to make to make it worth his time. And it was like 300 years he would have to make videos to make a million dollars or something like that. He would have to spend 300 years of his time to make a million dollars making these Wojak videos. And he decided logically, sure, you know, it gets a, a, a bit of payout, but, um, and you know, that's only if the video actually gets a certain amount of views. He, he, he actually tried for a little bit longer after he, he talked about this. He tried, you know, months down the road, he tried to start it up again, make a few Wojak videos, and they, they got hardly any views. So that was honestly, you know, his analysis was, you know, in optimum conditions. You know, theoretically, if all my videos get a certain amount of views, you know, then I'll make this amount of money in this given amount of time. But a lot of his videos didn't get that many views. So it was even worse, you know. <laughs>